<clears throat> All right, good afternoon. My name is Travis Sheridan. I'm the vice chair of the City of St. Louis Charter Commission. Uh, I'm pleased to call this uh, meeting, uh, this or call to order a special meeting of the Charter Commission organized and on behalf of the people of the City of St. Louis. The time is now 4.36 p.m. Central Time, and we welcome members of the public who have joined us virtually. Uh, the first item on the agenda is a roll call and approval of the June 17th meeting minutes. Uh, Secretary Antagliata. Thanks, Vice Chair. Um, uh, Chair Bobo, uh, well, just when I call your name, just say present. Chair Bobo, uh, Vice Chair Sheridan. Present. Uh, Parliamentarian Garth, Commissioner Crossland, present, Commissioner Dwight, Commissioner Grant, present, Commissioner Nolan Eccles, present, Commissioner Riley, present, Secretary in Tagliata. Uh, there are uh, six members present, Vice Chair. Okay, thank you so much. And then Secretary Intaglata, please call the roll call of ex officio non-voting members. Very good. Thank you. Um, when I call your name, please say president <laughs> or here. Um, uh, the Honorable uh, Joseph Volmer, Director Ingracia. Present. The Director Milberg. Present. The uh, Director Gray. Present. Okay. The, all, right. all right. Thank you, Secretary Antagliata. Uh, draft meeting minutes from June 17th are part of the meeting packet on the Charter Commission's webpage and in the Google Drive. I now recognize Secretary Antagliata again for a motion regarding approval of those minutes. And uh, Chair, if I might, I would just note that myself and Nodrick Tankins are also present. Oh, okay, sorry thank you so about much. that. Sorry. Noted. Thank uh, you. Sorry, Councillor. The okay. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes of uh, May seventeenth. Do I have a second? Second. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded, and uh, that we approve the meeting minutes from June seventeenth. Any discussions or corrections? All in favor. All in favor of approving these minutes, meeting minutes as uh, presented in, uh, and or amended, but there are no amendments. Uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, please say no. The motion carries. All right, our next uh, item on the agenda, item number three, is discussion regarding public comments and recommendations. Uh, let's see. Vice Chair? Yes. So as a part of this discussion, are we then going to vote on which recommendations, if any, to move forward? Yes, I believe yes. I okay. thought that vote was going to be July eighth. I thought is that was... is that on the July eighth meeting? I'm sorry, I'm taking yes. with my notes here. It is, okay. but I do think it'd be helpful to see where we're going, <laughs> right? Didn't we take a poll in voting on what seven or twelve recommendations would be discussed on yesterday? I think it would equally be appropriate to do that at this time even if we just did it virtually or verbally. Well, there was, uh, uh, Commissioner Nolan Eccles, you, uh, I, I agree with that. The, the Charter Commission held its public hearing last night at the Julia Davis Library. Uh, I think it would be good to open the floor for comments from the commission, uh, reflecting upon what we heard from the public yesterday, what was heard from the public yesterday, and any motions regarding the proposals. Um, the primary purpose of this agenda item is so that we can deliberate regarding the public's comments. However, if we have requests for legal advice, uh, we can reserve the right to go into a closed section session. Does that sound okay with everybody? Yes. And with that, uh, any any other comments before I, uh, does that sound, I'm just hearing from anybody else. Thank you, Commissioner O'Reilly. Okay. Uh, with that, I'm going to recognize each member of the commission, uh, starting with the proponents of the proposed amendments, uh, and then we'll also open it. That's both voting members as well as uh, non-voting members. Uh, so I'll start with uh, Commissioner Grant. Okay. Um, 
just formulating some <laughs> ideas here. Uh, I mean, I so to just talk a little bit about where we stand from last night, um, I will just maybe give my opinion. Um, and then I'd like to hear from other people. Um, uh, obviously, we encountered um, a lot of uh, disagreement last night with the process and the proposals, uh, especially as it related to the comptroller's office and uh, the board of estimate and apportionment. Um, I, I've sort of given a lot of thought as to how to process that uh, that skepticism, which I think is legitimate. Um, and, you know, I, I feel like it, it, it is our fault for not doing an adequate job of educating the public about our objectives. Uh, several people said last night, members of the public, stated they wanted to know why we were doing this, right? That's a very legitimate concern. And um, we, we, we have, for whatever reason, did not do a good enough job of outreach to the community to explain what we were doing. I think in many respects, the commission, you know, we are supposed to uh, sort of bypass the political process, but it's, it's I, I think my general view is that, um, we should not be taking action which encounters such harsh uh, harsh skepticism from the public. Um, and so my it, and I think it would be um, rash for us to advance proposals that were so opposed from last night. Um, and so, my personal view is that I, I believe what we have been calling heavy ENA reform, although comprised of very good ideas, uh, does not have a path forward. Um, uh, it was interesting, I think, that you know, if you started to break down last night the actual ideas behind heavy ENA reform, I think the public was receptive to them. But uh, unfortunately, presenting them uh, as, a, as a full package just was not well received. So I do think, however, based on what I heard from the public and um, co conversations with individuals afterwards, um, I, I believe um, we should continue to pursue, and there is a path forward, for a potential path forward for the proposals related to um, budgeting authority for the Board of Aldermen, um, elections, although there's debate as to whether they should be on even or odd years, um, the general just sort of um, modernization language or removal of sort of the obscure or um, provisions uh, uh, in the charter and perhaps a standalone public advocate. And, and I guess that's my feeling is like, is there a path forward for those proposals? What factors should we consider? Uh, am I underestimating uh, public opposition to those? Um, so I, I'd like to have a discussion about those proposals. I also just saw the mayor's letter, and I don't know, that was just emailed around, um, where she says she can only support two potential proposals, which is elections on odd years uh, and the modernization language. Um, I, I think to accomplish so little uh, is really an abdication of our responsibility. I think we really need to see if there are other structural reforms that we can accomplish uh, uh, before just um, essentially giving up like that. I, I'm not even sure that elections on odd years accomplishes anything because the idea is on even years, you drive up turnout 
uh, on odd years, you don't get that benefit. Right. So I, I, I'm not sure, going back to what the public said, what's the why behind that proposal? I'm not, and maybe, you know, the other people can speak to that. Uh, so, so, but I think, I think, I would like to think we could do more. And that's what I'd like to talk about. So, great. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Grant. I have a, a follow-up question for you, and really for the the for the body as as a whole. Uh, it has to do with heavy ENA reform. Uh, you know, when we think back to the reform that happened at the Board of Aldermen, uh, moving from twenty eight to fourteen alders, uh, that was given a ten year horizon in order to accomplish that. Uh, do we think that some of these more structural changes would be easier to accomplish if they had a longer event horizon, so that it's able to, we're able to separate uh, the the current in, the the incumbents or the current administration, regardless of whether it be legislative branch or executive branch or functional branches within government. Uh, if we were able to have a longer uh, event horizon, then it separates it from maybe the people in the current roles. That's a, a question that I'd like to ask everybody as well uh, as part of this conversation. Uh, Commissioner Crossland, I see your hand up, and then we'll go to Commissioner Nolan Nichols. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, uh, with re with regards to your most recent question, um, I do think that the time frame is 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 shorter than um, and logistically may be difficult, may have been difficult to accomplish. Um, even if uh, um, if, if if the proposals had been um, received uh more more um um uh, more positively last night um as a caveat to that i do also want to note though that um i um, visited with uh five or six uh neighborhood organizations um in the central corridor over the last month to six weeks and um, and the uh, sentiment uh, within um, those meetings um, was somewhat different. Um, part of it was that um, um, uh, I don't think that um, uh, the issue of the controller um, had been announced or had been had been focused on as 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 um, much as it was last night, and that kind of affected the dynamics of of the conversation. But there is openness to um, um, to finding a path. Maybe not the path that was that 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 was um, uh, that was proposed at the meeting last night. But 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 there did seem to be openness to a path. And so I want I want us not to assume that the reaction that we got last night is the only reaction of the public. Um, uh, it, the the re the reaction is probably more mixed. Having said that. Um, I do think uh, I concur with with Commissioner Grant that um, that um, heavy ENA, um, as we've discussed it so far, um, is probably it doesn't make sense right now for and it is probably precipitous for us to be considering advancing it to the Board of Aldermen at this at this point. Um, uh, it may be that we want to look a little bit more closely at some of the other um options uh, that uh, during the vote that we took last time were were secondary because um uh, because of the priorities we placed on on certain um items which clearly have not uh were not were not um 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 uh, 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 very attractive um at least at the meeting last night um what i do what i do think is that um um, that a lot of what happened was lack of not was 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 fueled by a lack of understanding of of the proposals and several people as they stood up and made remarks um, uh, said and and this was absolutely true that they did not understand the why what was the rationale in terms of how did these proposals actually um, help us to create. A better government than we have right now, and in lieu of understanding that, then they um, uh, they 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 uh, would prefer to leave things the way they are. So, if we plan to um, 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 propose additional 
um, items now, and obviously the Board of Aldermen later on, then that why becomes very important. Um, it, you know, we were, we were asked to put things together in ordinance form. We presented them in ordinance form. Um, all of that was perfectly fine, but the reality is we needed to step back. And this, I agree, that format, that presentation, that everything else, we could have done a better job because what we failed to do in the middle of it was to help people understand the why. Thank you, Commissioner Crossland. Commissioner Nolan Eccles. I want to start by saying a few things pertaining to what occurred yesterday and responding to Vice President, Vice Chair Sheridan's question directly. Yesterday was in fact a reflection of what I have heard for the past year in speaking with the public related to the Charter Commission process. I've communicated on multiple occasions to the total body what the feedback was and had those individuals to submit recommendation forms in which as a commission was unanimously denied to consider and reform to the to the ENA and to with the heavy reform was in those recommendations that I read off at the last several meetings. I also recommended that we extend this process so that we could actively engage the public by way of the strategy and process I presented on multiple occasions with the initiative recommendation that I put forth that was also unanimously denied by this commission. So yesterday, I do believe that we heard from the people, a mixed crowd of people and people that we have actively decided not to engage in this process. So I disagree with what, in some aspects of what Commissioner Crossland just stated. To answer the question regarding if more time related to abolishing the word that's being used <laughs> regarding the Comptroller's Office of the Board of ENA, this has been a tactic for the past three attempts, as I've also said, for this city government in which Commissioner Crossland has been a part of. This is not the first time this has been a tactic or a strategy. This is not the first time. So I do not believe we need more time to continue to do something the people do not want. They spoke against it last time this was up for charter reform, and they've spoken against it this time. So more time or a decade or two decades in between it, it's not going to change the perspective. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Nolan Eccles. Uh, Secretary Antagliata. And the, uh, um, a few thoughts. First off, I, I missed one meeting and it kind of goes to hell in a hand card, so I'm really disappointed. Um, the, uh, uh, joking. Um, the, uh, first off, let's just admit to ourselves that throughout this process, our public outreach and communication has been subpar. We have not done a good mm -hmm. job of that as a commission. We just need to accept that. And last night was somewhat of a result of that, although I think some of the testimony was certainly lobbied and, and pushed on us as well. So in a political process, and that's what that is, I would say that we need to be careful about assuming that we heard the will of the of the people last mm -hmm. night that uh, anybody who's ever gone to a lot of public events like this know that they generate a lot more heat than light um the uh and i think we should take it with a grain of salt we've we've done good deliberative work here we've come up with a strong set of proposals the it's hard for me to look at them and think about which ones should be dropped at this point uh, throughout this process i have been particularly um, strong in my adherence to allowing more folks to vote in the city of St. Louis. And, you know, quite frankly, it's 
it's I respect everybody who's given some input on that, but something that saves the city money and increases the amount of folks who go to vote just on the face of it is a good thing. I'm sure there's reasons that that should not happen, but I don't think there's really good reasons for it. The And I think that that's probably the case on a lot of these other items. And again, I think all of us would be absolutely incorrect in thinking that we have our hand somehow on the pulse of the mm -hmm. voters in the city of St. Louis mm -hmm. or the city of St. Louis. We just don't. The, the only way you ever get that is you do a poll and it's scientifically accurate. Sorry. The, we, we heard from folks last night, they were mad. And I don't think it should be any secret that people everywhere are a little mad these days and a little loud about it. So it was good input. I appreciate it from my perspective and all due respect to, to the mayor who appointed uh, me and, and everybody else on this commission. I, I'm very proud of the seven items that we had. I think we should, if we want to you know, amend them a little bit, we can, but I think we should send it to the Board of Aldermen and let them adjudicate it. They, that's what we did. That's substantive. So. Thank you, uh, Secretary Antagliata. Uh, Commissioner Riley, and then uh, Commissioner Nolan, I can get those, I'll see your hand. I'll get you to, to you next, please. Go ahead, Commissioner Riley. Thank you, Vice Chair Sheridan. Uh, thank you, Commissioners, and all those present who are watching or will see this recording later. Um, um, I, I was deeply concerned by our conversation last night with the public. Um, and so I respectfully disagree with you, uh, Scott, in terms of what you saw, what you heard from last night. Um, I, I'll speak for me and I'll take ownership for, for my own work on this commission. I have approached this commission from a very academic perspective. Let me hear, yes, from the public, but also let me read what the experts say. Let's see what other cities are doing. And unfortunately, that takes our work out of context because all of our good work lies in a particular cultural context in St. Louis. And unfortunately, that context is loaded with, in some cases, some, some corruption, some abuse of power, some lobbying, and some, some work behind the scenes over a long period of time to make adjustments that we don't know how to impact people. So what I heard last night to um, set to, to, to Krista Crossan, I think her comment, is that again behind the concepts mm -hmm. we have we have presented are ideas and ideals people support, but mm -hmm. the way these ideals will impact the mass of people, in particular those who've been historically disenfranchised, is wrong, mm -hmm. and will hurt our city in the long run if we want to be a unified city. So I agree with Commissioner Grant. Um, I pray that we do have a formal vote. I mean, I say pray, I'm not at work. I hope we have a formal vote on Monday. I will not vote to move some of these proposals forward, but there are pieces we need to take a look at, um, including this whole idea of an auditor or public advocate, um, but separate from removing the comptroller. Um, I have more comments, but I'll refrain. Uh, and I'll stop there for now. Thank you, Commissioner Riley. Uh, Commissioner Nolan Nichols, recognize you. I'll refrain so that you can move forward, Commissioner Sheridan. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I do wanna give, like I said, I'm going to call on each member of the commission uh, with that are proponents of the different amendments. Uh, Secretary Intagliata, I recognize you. You have a comment? No, uh, Vice Chair, I just made mine. Just wonder if there's anything else. Yeah, uh, no, Commissioner, no. yeah, Commissioner Crossland, anything additional you'd like to say? Okay. Uh, Parliamentarian Garth is not on. Uh, Commissioner Dwight? Uh, thank you, Asher. Um, yeah, uh, that's how public meetings can go. I think we're in a context where we're coming out of a pandemic. We're in, we're in an incredibly volatile um, state of the country where democracy is being drawn back in so many instances and then piled on to a really personal and emotional and felt history of race relations and racial inequity um, and white supremacy in the region. Um, and I think any process on this scale needs to be able to 
and have space for that kind of um, emotion and recognition of traumas to then paint a path forward, which I do think I concur with others that our process has not lived up to what is necessary to do that. And part of the, I said last night, but part of our call was to kind of live into some of those um, path forwards and principles that the Ferguson Commission raised. And I don't think we did those. And part of that is because we didn't have a fiscal note. <laughs> um, you know, we had this advanced timeline, um, a variety of, other, you know, uh, our, our wonderful, amazing technical support, not also not having a budget to do a whole bunch of public meetings. Um, so I think there were a lot of factors that added to it, but I do think that those are now coming to a head today where if we had kind of set some of those like values, that vision of the kind of city that we were trying to see and really like started from that place of why and built from there with the recommendations, um, I think that might've built the public um, investment differently. So personally, I still believe in a lot of these proposals, but I don't think it's prudent or could be more damaging to advance um, some of them. Um, I do think I support more than what the mayor said she would support in her letter. Um, so this ability to increase budget, um, those general reforms, I think we should include in those general reforms the increasing of the um, of the threshold for bidding from five to ten thousand dollars. I think that's a common sense like general reform that's just about inflation. Um, and is actually a huge barrier when it comes to being able to respond to, you know, community emergencies, to um, meeting basic service needs. Um, and I think we could make a clear why narrative for that being included in the general reforms. Um, support of the democracy reforms. I, I'd be interested in hearing more about what it might look like about the public advocate. I hadn't thought about that uh, still moving forward, but I'm open to hearing more about it. Um, something that I also heard some support for last night was around the right to organize um, language. I think we had a couple pieces of testimony that were in support of that. Um, so yeah, overall, I think we did get a sliver of the public input last night, a very legitimate sliver of that input that's, that's worth heeding and hearing. Um, and I think we really do need to do a... Um, some kind of reflection document and perhaps even as part of our recommendations present to the board what we think they should change by ordinance for how this process happens in the future. And I think that should include a budget for it as well as a longer process. Um, and I think that that could be one of our greatest contributions forward um, and even to put a set of suggestions together for where we think people should start uh, when they're doing a process like this. What are the most important like table stakes um, and even expanding um, the set of town halls that need to be part of the process. I, I believe now it's it's three need to happen. Uh, don't quote me if I got that slightly wrong, but I think increasing that would be would be helpful. So, um, yeah, that's that's where I'm at overall. Great, thank you, Commissioner Dwight. Uh, Commissioner Nolan Eccles, anything else you would like to add? Yes, I would like to start by saying there were several instances where I encouraged us to do a poll of the public related to these recommendations that was also unanimously denied by the commission. Based on last night, I keep hearing this um, perspective that yesterday was a slither of the public or it is not to be taken as the total perspective of the public or a complete view of what the public's perspective is. And what I think we're missing and what I think a lot of us did not hear for some of us that were not there um, or may not completely understand the historical context of the city of St. Louis. If you, again, were not born and raised here, there are some things you just simply are not abreast and aware of. These recommendations are not just about words on a paper to people that have navigated this system for years to make sure it is reflective of all people, all places, and all things. That is what is missing. And the individuals that wrote 
the recommendations as directed. The individuals that have pushed said recommendations without the inclusion of the people in those recommendations are the individuals who do not, in my opinion, understand what was said in a total landscape, in a complete framework of what was communicated last night. That is my perspective and my opinion. And I have stated that since the second meeting that we've had, it is, it is beyond important for the city of St. Louis to consistently reflect all of its citizens in every decision that it makes because that is the only thing that moves the city of St. Louis forward. I could not go to a public meeting where I was invited to things and explain recommendations that I, one, was not a part of, I, two, do not believe in, or I, three, did not understand how they were created when I'm looking at what the public has asked us to look at and look into related to the charter. So if individuals on this commission have put forth recommendations by way of information or an agenda or political influence or whatever, those are the individuals that need to be explaining those recommendations, the impact that they have and how they have them on individuals, on people, on families, on communities, on the entire city. You can't explain something that you have intentionally been omitted and removed from. And that is not just pertaining to these recommendations. That is how the city of St. Louis has navigated, in my, in my grandmother's opinion, for 70, 80, 100 plus years. So as I continue to communicate in this process that we cannot keep omitting the 48% of people that are also a part of this framework of this city that have made it what it is. You heard from individuals that are woven into the framework of this city on yesterday. And what I'm hearing is that you're, you heard from a slither, you heard from a portion, you heard from some. If you even think about all of the meetings that we've had, some of the members of the public have been at every meeting. They have given feedback at every meeting. And the recommendations that this commission put forth do not reflect even that public comment, even that public perspective, even that public agenda. This, These recommendations are not a reflection of the public and what the citizens want. The ordinance calls for recommendations that reflect the best interests of the public. And I also want to speak to what continues to be brought up about other commissions and other processes. The city of St. Louis is its own governmental systemic process that has actively plagued people. And what you saw last night is the continuation of the outrage of people being tired of not being protected by the government they vote for, they participate in, they pay taxes into, and they contribute to. So I don't appreciate, nor am I in agreement with the, minim the minimizing of that. <laughs> not, I'm not in agreement with it at all. As it pertains to the recommendation, the people can go back through the videos and they can read the items and the documents and everything that's been put forward to date and determine for themselves where we fell short with considering all perspective and making sure that the people's voices were heard in the recommendations. And as a commission, that was decided not to be prioritized. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Noel Eccles, can I ask you, a, I want to ask a follow-up question. And uh, Commissioner Dwight and Commissioner Grant, I, I'll recognize you in just a moment. Uh, you mentioned that none of the community, that members of the community and the public had made recommendations at uh, various charter commission meetings, but none of those recommendations were taken into consideration or even applied at, as the seven. Is that is that an, is that what you are accurately saying? That's correct. If you look at the list of recommendations, we got both in public comment and we got online that I read word for word in our public meeting where we were voting on which recommendations went forth, including mine that were unanimously denied. All of them, all of the public comments to date we decided as a commission was not to be prioritized, but these seven, which come by way of, I don't know where, is what the public or what this commission has decided the public wants. And it's inaccurate. 
I, it's my understanding that several members of the public had asked about a and recommended a Department of uh, a Department of Transportation, and that is one of the seven that we are moving forward. And I'm not trying to minimize or just try to identify one, but I just want to be careful that we're not uh, we're not making generalized statements uh, so that we could be much more specific in what we're trying to address. But uh, thank you for your comment. No, uh, I think I'm being very very specific and it's not a general the public trans the transportation of the department of transportation that we're speaking to that's one of seven recommendations if you really go to all one of 12 that we were supposed to put forth that's not a great enough percentage to consider the public being involved in all of the recommendations one of seven or one of 12 is not sufficient thank you uh, commissioner dwight and then we'll go to commissioner grant You're on mute, Commissioner Dwight. Thank you. Um, just two things. Um, I think what you're talking about, about the generational impacts of government, particularly on Black St. Louis City residents, is real. I think you mischaracterized what I said. I acknowledge that as vital, and my whole point was our process should be different. And I would just echo Vice Chair Sheridan that you're making generalizations about the process that I think really mischaracterize our spirit and intent. We didn't rise to the challenge of the level that we needed to, but to say that these recommendations didn't come from community members' voices and that we ignored them. I, I like just speaking, I, I know factually that we read through those, we included that voice uh, that we were able to gather, which wasn't enough. But I, I just don't want to let the record reflect incorrectly our process so far. Um, we can hold two things at once, that we didn't do enough to recognize, engage with, really act on behalf of that deep trauma that exists on behalf of our government. And we can acknowledge that we weren't bad faith actors trying to hide something. Those both things can be true. I highly disagree. So what I'll do is I'll go back to, I'll do it myself. I'll compile a report in a document as well as a letter with the meeting in which I brought up all of the public comment and all of the public feedback in which we received, including my own, in which it was unanimously decided that those items were not to be included so that it can in fact be on the record. And it is in fact fact that that is what this commission did. So it is not something that is passionately being addressed as something other than fact. It is in fact, fact. Okay, May thank you. I uh, ask that you make a list of those proposals because I too don't remember disregarding completely the comment that has been made. And from my understanding, I've taken that very seriously. So I, I take personal offense, honestly. So you could just get a list uh, as opposed to a whole narrative. That'd be helpful for me to see what we completely ignored. In your Google Drive, where the Charter Commission has compiled a list that I read from. It's a spreadsheet that has all of the recommendations. I had you all to go to it when I was looking at it. I read from it, item for item. And those item for item recommendations, including those from last night in which some of us are choosing to minimize, minimize on today, were not included, including my own. So I can go through my own recommendations and do the same thing. So for you, Commissioner Riley, I will make sure that I do that so that it is proven and in fact, fact that that is what occurred. Thank you so much. Uh, Commissioner Grant. So I, I, I do want to figure out, uh, we will have a vote on Monday of what to submit. Um, but between now and then, there is potentially more work that would need to be done, right? Like, in, if if there are going to be proposals to move forward, are there comments from the public or new ideas that we need to incorporate in the draft ordinances that have been circulated by the city councilor's office? And in particular, you know, we're, we're still potentially having individual meetings. I still plan to with the city councilor's office to work on um, any potential revisions. So 
I, I would just sort of like to get a feel for what sort of work would potentially need to be done on drafts to present uh, on Monday for a vote. Um, I think uh, we need to be prepared for that. And, you know, I'll say again, like, I, you know, I, there were a lot of, uh, last night, there were a lot of, when you put forth an idea, a lot of support for it. Like, we need to find a way for the city charter to have a have uh, make a position in the city that's more responsive to citizen needs in the provision of services. When an idea like that was presented, there was support for it. But I recognize that it appears that you know the heavy ENA and the public advocate position is just not going to get the support, or it needs more discussion. But I do think there, I don't recall one comment last night saying that the Board of Aldermen should not have greater budgeting authority. I heard a lot about there should be no elimination of ENA or the Comptroller, but I did not hear anything about uh, there should not be better, uh, greater budgeting authority to the Board of Aldermen. In fact, that's very responsive to the comments that we heard last night. When you think about our alder people being the most connected <laughs> to their communities and being the gatekeepers to some extent or the, or the liaisons with government and that we need to empower these folks to make decisions about appropriations and budgeting that can answer the needs of their constituents. That seems to me a very important thing and responsive to the comments that we heard last night. We also didn't hear anything about the Department of Transportation, nothing negative. Um, and we've heard a lot of public comment in favor of it so far. So do we need to uh, move, move that forward? Um, you know, we didn't hear any opposition to the the modernization piece which david earlier referenced so do we need to uh work with the city councilor to uh move that forward and i think we you know do we need to ask the city councilor to draft us uh sort of alternating uh proposals for elections one on odd years and one on even years um which well, i think we, we should what? you know so we can have that ready to go um, maybe we vote for none of them, but I think we should be, you know, uh, be prepared for that possibility on July 8th. So, so I would like to have that discussion and um, uh, if, if necessary, you know, uh, authorize the city councilor to, to draft maybe alternating proposals dealing with the elections. So along that line thank you chris that was uh extremely constructive a along that line i think if i were to go back and the think about what was done internally because again i i think that you can hear a lot good and bad from the from the public in an unstructured way that you know it, you you can't modify that it's very hard to to take it in in a constructive formative way but our internal deliberations where we have thought about it from a number of angles the it it does seem that ENA and the the dissolution of ENA has been problematic and, and controversial throughout. It doesn't seem that the creation of a public advocate has been a negative though. It seems like most of us have, have adhered to that. The Department of Transportation has clearly been talked about internally and externally pretty receptively. It's hard to say that that shouldn't go. Um, the on, on uh, the election front, 
we've never talked about odd months. Um, the I guess we could entertain it, but I I think the election provisions were pretty strong, and there wasn't any if there was little if any disagreement on those. The so right there you have a pretty good slate modernization of language. It seems like everybody internal and external, although our our focus here is internal, was in favor of that. The uh, uh, it did seem that uh, that that mayoral appointment. Um, was also problematic, and I think that there was some consternation uh, inside our commission, so perhaps that doesn't make it, but I think there's a very good argument that we've done our duty and the are putting forward the things that, that we most agree on. Again, it's tough to back off the entire seven because we had lots of agreement on it, but the ones that maybe have been a little friction full have have been ENA and and mayoral appointment. Um, and perhaps those come out, but keep the rest. I think there was a lot of you know adherence to the others. Thank you, uh, Secretary Tagliata. Uh, Commissioner Nolan Eccles. I think that I'm what I'm hearing from, or maybe I didn't ask the question. Commissioner Grant, can you answer the following question? Are you recommending that we determine that the ones that didn't get opposition or have yet to get opposition are the ones that we concentrate on tonight for discussion or for July 8th for voting? I'm trying to be clear on which one you're asking. I, I, my, I think we need to be able to give some direction to the city council's office over what we're going to do over the next couple of days. I think that's it. I mean, do, do we, you know, I, it, if I think we need to decide, look, if heavy ENA is dead, then let's not do it. If public advocate is dead, maybe don't do it. But I do think, you know, I don't think we should, if, if there are, a certain a bare number of commissioners are still interested in doing some of this stuff. I th I think we need to be able to tell the city council let's let's draft this up and present it on July eighth for a vote. Okay, so that's what I'm making sure that I heard. So with my issue with that and moving forward with what the commission wants is that we're doing exactly what the ordinance says not to do. We're having public hearings and public meetings for the sake of public input related to the recommendations that we're putting forth. If the public is publicly communicating to us that they disagree with or they're not in favor of certain things and certain recommendations, I would it would behoove us not to do that. So I am quite- I, I say that, That's not what the ordinance says, but I get the spirit of what you're saying. Correct. Right? The ordinance doesn't say we have to do exactly what the public tells us to do, but- I get what happened last night, but on the other hand, no one from the public last night said, do not move B&O budgeting authority forward. No one said that. So I will go back through. I know that I saw several people stand at the podium and shake the entire document and say they are opposed to everything in it, but I'll go back to make oh, sure that I'm not. Um, I guess you are correct that some people said there should be no reform whatsoever. I think that's inconsistent with our mission. I think we are allowed to consider uh, ideas. I mean, the whole point is if there are six members of the commission who vote something forward, that's enough. Uh, so I think you're absolutely right. We need to take the consideration of the public, but just because a few people said last night, don't do anything, I don't think we're bound by that. I think we do need to consider the spirit of what was conveyed last night, right? Uh, but I think there are, I mean, I certainly heard uh, from, an, I've heard from a number of members of the public, including last night, that they would want to have their alder people 
to have the ability to budget items to be more responsive to their constituent needs. I heard that last night. So I think well, to respond to, to respond to the, the budgeting issue, I think everything related to finance, the way that the city is structured, the comptroller's office, the board of ENA, which includes the mayor, is responsible for the financial activities of the city. When we start to play with items that belong to other areas without considering the total impact and what that means and what it requires, I don't believe we've done enough vetting to make those types of decisions. We've spent 10 months. We've spent 10 months on this. And, and there has been no vetting. We have heard from the public. We have heard from experts. We, we I think to just to say don't do it is an abdication of our responsibility to thoroughly and carefully consider these proposals. I know you might have a vote that's different, but we, I think, I I don't think personally, I did not hear anything over last night, let alone within the last 10 months to say we should not consider budgeting authority for the Board of Aldermen. Nothing about saying that we shouldn't eliminate the comptroller, which I don't think was a fair characterization of what we're doing, but nothing about we shouldn't eliminate the comptroller necessarily means we should not invest our democratically elected alder people who are closest to the constituents with the authority to budget and make appropriations on their own through, which would be subject to a mayoral veto, right? But not, mm -hmm. you know, but to be able to respond to their constituent needs. I, I just don't see that inconsistency. But they disagree. I'm still, I, I, under, I understand your perspective and for some of it, I agree, but I, I've also... I also understand that the mayor is financial ramifications, duties, responsibilities, all of those, as it includes, or as it entails with the comptroller and the board of ENA. So I think all things related to the financial structure still require some vetting. I have been a part of this process for 10 months with the rest of you. I don't recall us doing vetting of the financial structure and operations of the city in order to make certain decisions of that magnitude. And that is the issue with the recommendations that we're putting forth. We're putting forth vision without considering the actual results, outcomes, and impacts of certain things. That's all I'm saying. But we have considered the results. I, I don't, we've had debate about this for 10 months. We have considered, okay, we have heard from, we heard from the budget director. We heard from the comptroller's office in our work group. We've had they've had opportunities to present testimony at our hearings about why do we not currently have a board of aldermen that has the power to increase or insert new line items in a budget? They said because for years that was considered uh, a check against potential deficit spending by the board of aldermen. So that's a potential potential problem, but we can consider that and say, you know what, we still think having that power is important anyway, because it gives our older people a greater say and enhances democracy and transparency in our government. That's a good thing. So we've considered that. I think we've heard the testimony on it. And I, I still think personally, that's something we should pursue. I know the mayor doesn't seem to support it. Okay. But, you know, uh, I I think that's my personal opinion. And moreover, we need to be able to present, you know, if we're going to have any further discussion about this on July 8th, we need to be able to talk to the city councilor about it in the next day or two, a day really, uh, you know, about what ordinance needs to be drafted. So. Thank you. I, I think I want to... Uh, uh... Secretary Antaglia, I'll call you in just one moment. I just wanted to make one one comment uh, related to what we've been discussing. Uh, we are all accountable to our individual votes and for our individual votes on this throughout this entire process. If if there are six uh, members of the commission that vote something uh, to move forward, uh, while that we may or may not agree on what the degree of vetting is, our ability to vote no on things is just as uh, as strong as our ability to vote vote uh, affirmatively for things. And I think we need to use that process and be held accountable to that. We are held accountable to that. It will ultimately go to the Board of Aldermen and Alderwomen uh, for, for further refinement. But that is part of our vetting process, is our ability to cast a vote favorably or in favor or, or not in favor. Uh, Secretary Intagliata? Yeah, the, uh, just um, this entire discussion is just 
not move me away from my original thought process here is that we've done some excellent work here over 10 months. We need to send these items to the Board of Aldermen. And uh, the uh, I appreciate Commissioner Grants and, and think he's got a good point. If we're going to change something, we can pull something out. But I think we should make that decision tonight. I'm more than happy to stick with the seven recommendations that we've made and, and intended to forward a week or two ago when we voted on it. It's just hard for me to ha hear an argument on why we shouldn't, so. Thank you. I'd like to uh, I'd like to continue to work through. We have one last commissioner that I wanna call on and then I wanna call on the no non-voting members and then I'll ask for any motions of uh, at that point. Uh, Commissioner Riley, anything else that you would like to add? Yes, thank you, uh, Vice Chair Sheridan. Uh, one of the things I thought that was very interesting were the comments made by former Alderwoman Rice, is that her name? Rice? Yes. In which she she really encouraged the commissioners to consider uh, putting forward proposals that had only been thought, thought all the way through. And although we have talked, as we've just discussed for 10 months, that really struck me that as much work as we have done in 10 months, have really thought each of these proposals all the way through. One example I thought of is that we are requiring the Office of Public Advocate to be the same size as Department of Personnel. Do we have an estimate of the cost of that? So I'm not asking us to answer that question now, but as far as I remember, we've discussed what it needs to look like and why, but not the nuts and bolts of what this really will look like for the city. Um, I, I'm in favor of moving elections to um, a later time in the year, I think will help in terms of budgeting process, et cetera. However, um, we have not talked at length about the impact on school board elections. What does that mean for our school board elections? Um, I did mention a former meeting, um, not having the election on the presidential cycle. I do not think it's equitable to think that, that our elected officials have the money to have their face seen alongside of presidential candidates, et cetera. And so the, the ability for someone to be noticed in our community, uh, to be heard is greatly diminished by putting them on this election year. Let's take this year as an example, um, how much it would take to get on someone's radar given our current political system federally. Um, I do think that having more time between the budget, when the budget is due is helpful for the budgeting process. And so our current process only gives the mayor a few months to kind of have influence in that in that process. Um, but I think we need to consider how it impacts the school board, number one. And that was a public comment someone made uh, that was not read yesterday, but we received your email, but also to look at uh, what it could look like in terms of how long the ballot is for the presidential year. While I'm saying that, in the Q&A, someone raised, would it save money to move the elections? Uh, board of VNA would still, Board of Elections would still have to run the school board election and community college elections in March and April, that is true. Uh, wouldn't the state need to allow for a change in school board and community college elections? Yes, that is true. It would be cheaper, but there will still be an election in March and April. And then someone asked also, isn't the board bringing increasing budget to the board bill already? Yes. So it's already a board bill in process to increase budgeting authority, increase and decrease budgeting authority, or, or they get that access to the, the board of aldermen. Um, I'd also add, there was consensus, I think, around Department of Transportation, but there wasn't understanding. And so back to the initial comment around what does this mean? Why is this helpful? How will it help our constituents? That we didn't message well. And what will be different than what we have now? So if currently, I know that I can drive streets in a certain part of St. Louis and they are well paved and other streets are not. Well, how will that be any different when there's just one large department? How will that advance everyone's uh, initiative so that all people are equitably be cared for? Um, secondarily, there were a couple of things that we did hear early on that we heard again last night, I think, around the cap for ordinances, uh, no, the, the uh, cap for fines, which I think did get lost. Um, so we did, that was something we did, we did discuss, the, the whole $5,000 for uh, purchases that did get lost. There are small things to, maybe to us perhaps, because we have such other large things to consider, which we, we may want to go back and take a look at. Um, the last thing that I noted that has not already been said is I did hear consensus around 
um, uh, an auditor for the city around subpoena power. I'm not sure we had support for an entire department to do that, but at least, and that's the department I mean uh, in terms of large um, standalone department, but, but at least a person, small office that does that, there is support for that. Again, with the question of how will this be, be paid for? Uh, so I'm in support of some of the initiatives. Um, there are a few things here I think we need to, we, to consider. Uh, for example, in terms of mayoral appointments, where's the check for that? Uh, I heard a recommendation for confirmation. That's a, that's this conversation we could have. Uh, we can go on to other things that are listed here. Uh, but um, I do think we can move some of these initiatives forward. But also, we need to consider the time that the councilor needs. I know we're going to vote on Monday, but perhaps we do need, as someone mentioned earlier, to have some kind of uh, unofficial vote tonight so we know what to work on between now and Monday. I'll always have the balance of my time. Thank you, Commissioner Riley. I'd like to call on. I'd like to now call on the non-voting members, and I'll start with uh, Director Casey Milberg. Any comments? Hi. Yeah. Good evening. It is friendly evening. Good evening, everyone. Um, thanks, everybody, for again the time tonight. Um, yeah, I think today was a day of a lot of reflection and thinking on the mayor's behalf. And as you saw, she sent out a letter um, this afternoon, shortly before uh, the start of this. Meeting had hoped to get out to you all a little bit earlier today, but um, like I said, it was a day of a lot of reflection and thinking on her part. And you know, her observations from last night were that you know it's important to prioritize things that are ballot ready, and that there are a lot of ideas that are meritorious, but may just warrant a little bit more of a time frame for additional consideration. And so, in that spirit as well as in the spirit of wanting to provide some clarity on what her current thinking is. Um, you know, she's purposely refrained from engaging a little bit more publicly in this, um, aside from her January testimony to the working groups with her recommendations. And the intention with that was wanting to make sure that this had an impartial process that wasn't, um, you know, tainted by the perception of her trying to exert political influence. So she thought it was time, especially after last night, to just provide a little bit of context and clarity on the totality of her thinking right now. So again, her focus was on items that are ballot ready. And so that's not to say that these other items aren't things that she could support, but that, you know, she believes that the time frame right now may not allow for as much discussion as could be needed or necessary, as much community feedback as could be needed or necessary on some of them. So again, not to say that she doesn't have support for some of these other items, but that's the spirit in which that letter was written. Um, and so it's important to her to communicate that as well as her sincere and true appreciation and gratitude for the extremely difficult work and difficult time frame, and um, just the constraints that this group has operated under for the better part of a year. Um, I do want to uh, briefly um, comment and affirm that the board bill currently working its way through the process um, to provide for uh, the board of aldermen to be able to increase the amount of any item in the appropriations process or add um, an additional item that wasn't previously in, previously in the appropriate uh, in the city uh, proposed budget. That's board bill number 30. It was perfected on Friday. So just wanted to add that to the record. Um, so just mentioning that for awareness, um, the mayor certainly would love to sit and visit, whether over the phone or in person with anyone about, you know, there's a proposal that you really do feel strongly about. She wants to be able to hear your perspective on this um, and continue to do that. And um, yeah, I would welcome making some time, you know, for individual conversations in the days to come, if that's helpful to you to better understand her thinking on things right now, or if there's something that you want to do to try to, you know, communicate to her. So I think I'll abbreviate my comments to that for now. Um, thank you, uh, Vice Chair Sheridan, for making space and for facilitating this conversation tonight. You know, I think after last night, everybody, you know, recognizes that there's a lot of big decisions to be made, um, a lot of different perspectives to be taken into account. I think that there's there should be no question that every single member of this commission is genuinely open to that, to hearing from the community, to wanting to make sure that their voice is reflected, you know, in these recommendations. So I do want to make sure that that's acknowledged as well and just stated for the record that that's certainly the mayor's perspective is that every single person on this commission has really tried to do that. And again, I think that there's some 
lessons that I think we would all take away from this about how things could change for a future charter commission, right? And improve that process to allow for more input, you know, and more clear and probably a bigger, you know, budget to work with. And um, they've been hard lessons, but I think they're, they're good ones. And yeah, I think I'll limit it to that for now. Thank you, Director Milberg. Uh, I'd like to now recognize uh, Special Assistant, Assistant uh, Nodrick Tekins. Tekins. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Uh, thank Good you. Day. So I just want to start off by uh, recognizing that the comptroller, uh, the current comptroller herself, did uh, release a public statement last evening, and she was not in support of the changes uh, related to the ENA, the public advocate, and so forth. Um, so I just wanted to make that part of the record. Uh, you got, guys probably, uh, this is my first time speaking, so you don't know me, but I just want to let you guys know that I am an accountant, and I've been an accountant for almost two decades. And from uh, my feedback from sitting in on the meetings and listening to the items related to budget, um, ENA, such as the oversight, um, I, I would not say that I'm not in support of change or new ideas. Uh, I think for me, the, the story of why was lacking. There was an understanding for me, uh, you know, being an accountant, trying to understand what the change would be um, functionally uh, and what I would consider the accounting world, the flow chart of how this item used to flow through the world and what this change actually does uh, on the ground. Um, I think that that need, may need to be vetted a little bit more in some of the areas. Um, but that's not to say that it's not a good idea, not even, um, you know, the, the way to go to, to seek some of those answers to potentially change uh, the structure of ENA or even the comptroller's office or even the public advocate's office. I will uh, also point out though, um, in some of the research that I did independently and with the help of um, some others that I reached out to, that um, some of the ideas that were modeled on, for example, New York, it didn't quite make sense to me why New York was chosen as a model. There's not much, uh, uh, similarity between our city and that city. And then the uh, the idea of the public advocate, which New York does have, but New York also has an elected comptroller. So I didn't understand uh, how those equated, that if we are modeling it on a city that has both offices, why weren't we trying to move that forward? what was the thought process behind the elimination of the one public office for another one? Um, so that's just a little bit of my feedback on uh, those particular proposals. Uh, but I do also um, feel that some of the proposals are completely reasonable and necessary as well. Um, some of the form changes, uh, you know, name changes, and even some of the other ideas about the creation of uh, transportation department, or Department of Transportation. Uh, but again, I think that there may need to be a little more vetting to the granular level to see, uh, you know, how that would actually impact in the real world, boots on the ground, as uh, was just mentioned ago, a moment ago. How does that get streets repaired faster or more efficiently um, by making that change. So I, I do think that branding is, is very important in setting people's expectations. Uh, you, can, you can pretty much uh, get anybody to go along with anything if you set the expectation properly and it's reasonable. Um, so I would encourage us all to um, continue to move forward uh, with a mindset that this is doable, we may just need a little bit more engagement and better a better story to tell and to tell that story continuously. Thank you so much. I would like to now recognize City Councilor Hamilton for comment. Thank you, Vice Chair Sheridan. I am 
not expressing any opinion either way about any of these um, recommendations because I do not want it to seem as though I'm, I'm stating a legal opinion in public about one of them either way. I, I know that you are all gonna have to vote your conscience, right? And I think the question you have to really ask yourself, which has been asked by a number of people already, and I'm gonna ask it again for emphasis, is, is this language ballot ready? Um, do you know everything that is going to happen or have you attempted to identify everything that is gonna happen as a result operationally um, and legally with respect to the drafts? And one of the things I'll raise is I understand that the Department of Transportation was an idea um, that we had lots of public testimony about, largely from um, uh, TrailNet. However, I'm not sure that we ever spoke to the streets director, and you all can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, the other thing I wanted to respond to Commissioner Riley, who asked a question about um, staffing and budget for the Office of Public Advocate. There is mention in the language about it being the same size as the Department of Personnel. Um, you received a presentation on September 24th from Casey Milberg and Christine Ingracia regarding city government. And as part of that PowerPoint, um, it went through the fiscal year 24 budget for various departments. The Department of Personnel has 54 employees and a $112 million budget. Um, that budget includes benefits and pension. And so I believe, and Director Greg, correct me if I'm wrong, when, when you are called upon that the, the budget for the actual staffing for um, the Department of Personnel minus benefits and pension is in the $5 million range. Um, so that's just a, a fact to share. And I believe that the public advocate for New York said that, that, that he was staffed at 60 and, and again, our Department of Personnel is staffed at 54. So that is really my main um, question that I think you all have to put to yourselves, right? As Is whether or not this language is, is ready, ballot ready. Thank you so much, Council, uh, City Councilor Hamilton. Uh, Director Jenkins Gray, I'd like to turn it over to you. Oh, um, okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Vice Chair uh, Sheridan. Thank you, everybody, for all of the work um, that has been put into this. Um, everything that I could potentially say has already been said, um, you know, but I will share just, you know, one thought uh, from an organizational development standpoint. When any organization, any entity is trying to drive change and get buy-in for change. Um, and it's already been stated, right, that, you know, one of the things that we probably could have done a better job at is actually in the engagement, the explanation, those types of things like that. It's really critical um, to explain the need for the change the results of the change and the benefits of the change. Because most people wanna to know today, what is in it for me? How is this gonna impact me? And so I have to go back to what we've already said and that many of these things that we're putting forth, if they have not been vetted to the point that we can answer those questions for people, then it is probably something that should be delayed, um, given further thought into, uh, because at the end of the day, our goal, when we talk about change, we're talking about the goal, is to get some to get changes for the charter that we believe that we can get across the finish line. So if there's any doubt, if it is not vetted, if we can't go to the to the public and say, this is what it is, this is how it's going to impact you, this is how we see this working within the city, across departments, and we've thought through all of those things, then my recommendation would be for the consider uh, the commission to consider postponing, delaying, doing further research until we are solid with get, getting it across the finish line. Because if not, then it is clearly going to impact the credibility of the Charter Commission more. And we're not going to accomplish what we spent for the last 10 months doing. Um, I don't know. I believe some months ago that it was recommended that some of the ballot language may be to extend the Charter Commission for a period of time. 
to be able to vet these uh, additional issues and things where there's consternation. Thank you. Thank you, Director uh, Jenkins Gray. I really appreciate that. Uh, Commissioner Grant, I'll recognize you and then Commissioner Riley to follow. You're on mute, Commissioner yeah. Grant. I, I think I just, I'm a bit frustrated by hearing these calls for more time. Uh, we have been charged with the responsibility of developing proposals to reform our charter. I think all of us here recognize that there are structural impediments in our charter that are holding back this city, right? No one here in what we heard last night where there are deep problems with the functions of this city and how it provides services, how it responds to constituent concerns, how it operates on a day-to-day -day basis. And I'm not sure to say at this point, say, well, we need more time to study these. I'm not even sure how we do that when we have to get ordinances to the board on Monday or Tuesday. Um, I think to say, well, the board is already considering some of these ideas is then what is the point of what we've done the past 10 months? Now, I understand there are some realities associated with what what we have failed to uh, to uh, educate the public about, or that we have failed to take adequate concern. But if to go through 12 months and all we really accomplish is change the titles of office, update advertisement, and uh, change the pronouns in our constitution, or our charter, I think that's a deep failure. That is a deep, deep failure of what we have been charged with doing. Um, and so I just I'm just going to say that, um, and uh, and and that's all. Thank you, Commissioner Grant, uh, Commissioner Riley, and then Commissioner Nolan Eccles. I'll recognize you next. Thank you, Vice Chair Sheridan. Um, one of the comments that came up last night was, um, "This was a great first meeting. When are you coming back?" And none of us said. This is the last meeting. We are not coming back. Um, I know that our charge ends once we send the bill, to, or rather the, the uh, recommendations to the Board of Aldermen, uh, but I think we should consider potentially going back to explain what went forward, what did not go forward, and why, but also for those things that did not go forward, which we think are important, again, why, how we write that information, and what can happen the next year be a board bill or 10 years be an ordinance for the next charter commission to advance those other areas as well. Um, I know, I think Mr. Dwight mentioned a uh, write up proposals for the next commission, kind of a um, guiding post for kind of what to do there. I think that's important as well. But we heard last night, if it's at city hall, if it's on Zoom, if it's written on paper, that's not what we want to see you in person in the room. And I think at least for North St. Louis and for uh, three wards out of 12 for three marginalized wards, even now in our in our more streamlined system, uh, that we could go back and have those conversations where they're informed and can be more supportive of the next conversation again in a year or in 10 years. But also so that when it comes up in November on the election ballot, when it, on, on the ballot when it comes up in 10 years, they have been properly informed again as to what's happening and why and can make more informed decisions. I like that idea. Thank you, Commissioner Riley. Uh, Commissioner Nolan Eccles and then uh, Director Jenkins Gray, I'll recognize you next. Thank you. I think that we also need to understand that moving forward recommendations to the Board of Aldermen that would then either be approved or denied by the mayor still have to hit the ballot and these citizens still have to approve or deny it. They still have to agree or disagree with it. So doing the next three steps of the process without making sure that the finish line can even be crossed is still, to me, a great failure. If we do not do the necessary activities, the necessary processes to make sure that we can finish the race, doing the next three steps without doing that is 
still going to produce the same outcome. So I also want to make sure that I state the initiative recommendation that I sent the entire commission several months ago included the language for the next charter commission or even an extension to our charter commission that allows for the total engagement as which we've planned to be done according to how it needs to be done within the budget that we now know we have. So that language has been created, drafted, written, distributed in a proposal ballot language ready forum. And in doing so, we give ourselves the opportunity to actually be successful in crossing the finish line with charter reform for the city of St. Louis for the first time. I too want this to be very successful. It only is successful if we have buy-in from the public. Thank you, Commissioner Nolan Eccles. Uh, Director Jenkins Gray. Oh, thank you, Vice Chair Chairman. Uh, Vice Chair uh, Sheridan. Um, I just want to go back and just briefly respond to something, and that is we all have our right to disagree with one another um, for personal reasons or ideas or thoughts. Um, but when I come to you or my coming to you, I'm coming at it from a professional standpoint. I have been doing this work for over 30 years. And organizational development, development is one of my specialties. I also want to caution us from using the word failure, that if we don't do certain things, then this commission has failed. We have only failed if we do not satisfy the needs of the city of St. Louis and we don't do it in the best interest of the city of St. Louis. If we move forward with things that is not our best product or our best Put, put forth, then we have failed because we have not done what is in the best interest of the city or the best interest of our community. So, you know, I just wanted to put that out there for the commission to think about because if we have to do something different or take a different road, that does not imply failure on this commission. It is, a, it, uh, it, apply, it, it, it really means that we are astute in doing the work that we were tasked to do even if it means that we have to go back and change the direction that we're going. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Director Jenkins Gray. Uh, I'm often reminded uh, of the, the adage that we, we shouldn't let perfect become the enemy of good. And I think the, the expectation that uh, everything that we put forth is 100% ballot ready or that would have 100% support or have support and pass uh, at the Board of Aldermen and Alderwomen or the Mayor's Office or receive a, uh, unconditional or even the, the required votes uh, by the public is uh, is not necessarily something that uh, things, things not being passed uh, at any body, whether it's an elected body or by the, the, the body populace, uh, is an indication of it's still a result. It's still a data point. Um, but I, I do I do appreciate a lot of this dialogue this evening. Uh, I don't see any more hands, and so I, I'm going to we're going to remain on this agenda item just for uh, I'm going to ask now if there's any motions that people would like to make related to uh, the items that were discussed today. I I would like to make a motion that so we can. Let me preface this so we have at least something to consider and vote on that we authorize uh, the city councilor's office to draft um, an elections related proposal that would put the elections on the odd year as proposed by the mayor. And that and, and the alternate would be the even year so that we have that we can at least vote on something related to that yay or nay on monday a second second okay it's been uh, appropriately moved and seconded i'll call for a vote all those in favor say aye aye, aye. 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 Uh, any opposed indicate by saying nay hearing none uh, the motion passes any other motions uh, related to some of the discussion we've had this evening? I move to ask the attendees if they have public comment at this time. 
Thank you, uh, Commissioner Nolan Eccles. I just before we take a vote on that, I noticed that we did not have public comment on the agenda this time. So uh, thank you for mentioning that. Uh, is there a second on uh, uh, Commissioner Nolan Eccles' recommendation? Before I do that, do we can we do that actually with how will we make an attendee a panelist to be able to to testify? That's a good question. Uh, technical support. If we can, then I'll second it. But if we can't, then yeah. we can move forward. It's Thank you. It's possible. Okay, I second. Okay, it has been moved and seconded. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Indicate by saying no. Okay, the motion passes. Uh, Commissioner Nolan Eccles, we will uh, add that as the, as the agenda item uh, following this uh, this discussion. Is that okay? Yes, thank you. Thank you for your uh, motion. Uh, any other motions related to the topics we've just discussed? I'd like to move that we do not move forward the ENA heavy reform. It's been moved. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those uh, opposed indicate by saying no. Nay. 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 It looks like it that passed four to three. If I had my count right, I believe it was uh, Commissioner Nolan Eccles, Commissioner Riley, Commissioner Crossland, and Commissioner Dwight. Um, you you need five. We do need five. We don't just need a majority of the attendees. My apologies. Okay, then the motion fails. Any other motions that would like to be made this uh, related to this discussion? I move to not move forward with the mayoral appointments recommendation. I'll Is there second that. Okay, all those in favor indicate by saying yes or aye. 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 Opposed indicate by saying no or nay. No. No. Any abstentions? I I did not vote. I um I I would vote nay. But I'm not sure what we're doing here. Are we I thought July eighth was our vote. I just wanted to clarify and see if there was any anything that, that we have discussed, if that's going to shape our meeting on July 8th or any of the discussion on July 8th. And I put forth my motion so that if it were to pass, that the city council's office wouldn't do any work to kind of clean that up before us for Monday, extra work on things we know are going to fail. We're not going to move forward. That was my thought behind the motion. Okay. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that I thought when we um, agreed to the meeting on Tuesday was that we were going to get provide guidance to the city councilor's office about what might need to be prepared for the following week. And in order to do that, we actually have to make some decisions. We can't simply say, um, gee, maybe we like this, maybe we don't, but we have to. And if there's something that clearly we think uh, is questionable or that um, that we, we think is not going to move forward, then it's uh, it would behoove us now to be helpful to the counselor's office by providing that information to them. I just want to I just want to uh, for a point of order, we are in the middle of a vote at this point. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to call that vote again. That was uh, and we're going to do a roll call vote. It was rec it was requested in the Q&A that we do roll call vote. It makes it a little bit less confusing uh, and allows for the account for the delay that might exist. Okay. Uh, 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 Commissioner Jasmine or Nolan Eccles, could you make your motion again, please? I move to remove the mayoral appointment recommendation. Okay, was who seconded that? I believe it was. Uh, I did. Yeah. Okay, it has been properly moved and seconded. I'll call for a roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Grant. Aye. Uh, Secretary Intagliata. Aye. Commissioner Riley. Nay. Uh, Commissioner Dwight? Aye. Commissioner Crossland? Aye. Commissioner Nolan Eccles? Aye. 
and I vote aye as well. Uh, that has the votes that will not move forward. So I'm going to move, since I was a nay vote on heavy ENA reform, I'm going to make a motion to reconsider. Um, but I would, I'm going to say this, uh, that um, my motion would be that we drop heavy A, ENA reform, but that we put to vote on July 8th, in addition to the elections measure that's already been voted, the modernization measure, the B&O budgeting authority, the Department of Transportation, and the standalone public advocate. That's my motion. Can you repeat the motion specifically without the that we drop because it, because, just quickly because it does not mirror the prior motion it is not a motion to reconsider it's a different motion well then i'd make a new motion that we drop heavy ena reform from consideration further consideration but on july 8th that in addition to the elections measures, al alternating election measures we discussed, that we have the city councilor finalize draft ordinances related to the modernization of the charter language, the BNA, B, I'm sorry, uh, Board of Aldermen Budget Authority, the Department of Transportation, and a standalone public advocate. Jack, for a second. It has been properly moved and seconded. I will do another roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Grant? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Crossland? Aye. Secretary Intagliata? Aye. Commissioner Riley? Aye. Commissioner Nolan Eccles? Nay. And I vote aye as well. The motion passes. Aye. <laughs> Who did I miss? Did I miss you, Commissioner? Commissioner Dwight. It's all right. Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Dwight. All good, all good. So have it have I got it straight that we are drafting all of them except for heavy ENA and mayoral appointment? No, I would like to do another motion. Okay. No, I uh counselor, I believe I believe what we're saying is that we're going to keep modernization of language and both alternative elections was, I believe, what we just voted on. That is not correct. No, the, the, the modernization, the language for the elections uh, was a previous motion. Uh, this motion right, that was- That was caveated in, in Chris Grant's motion, just that, right? It, not that, we, are, we already know we're going forward with Correct. It. Right. What was voted on uh, in that past was the, um, the modernization language. Well, first of all, dropping ENA, Correct me if I'm wrong, dropping ENA, modernization language, budgeting authority by the Board of Alders. Help me out. What else? Department of Transportation. Department of Transportation. And um, uh, but, 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 public, public advocate. advocate. Public advocate. Uh, Commissioner Nolan Eccles, you uh, wanted to make another motion? No. Okay. Uh, could I ask a question? Yes. Um, the cap, or the, uh, excuse me, the 5,000 versus 10,000 threshold, was that included? Where, where in our, that was not included in our packet of seven. Um, Commissioner Dwight, I believe that's in the second set of five that are uh, in the total 12 um and that was when we left out of the right list. and um what what i think we're agreeing to do i can't be sure and maybe we need to go back and clarify this is while we have dropped several items uh which now i don't know whether that means we drop them totally off of our list or we drop them down into the secondary list but that we will forward the secondary list to the board of aldermen just not with complete draft ordinance language and they may choose to select items out of that or not 
and what I got down and correct me if I'm wrong is that you are advancing everything except for heavy ENA and mayoral appointments and that you are adding a second version of board of election um, drafting. Yes. Yes. At this time, uh, I would like to open it up for public comment. Uh, if, if, uh, if anyone who wants to speak just uses the raise hand function, we can do it that way. Thank you. A couple of notes in the Q and A. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and call those out. Uh, I wanted to give those individuals an opportunity if they wanted to make those comments publicly, uh, but we do have a comment from uh, Jerry Connolly requesting that the uh, letter from Mayor Jones be uploaded to the Charter Commission's website today. And then uh, I know that Charles Bryson, I believe, uh, submitted uh, that he would like to make a public comment, but he also commented here in He's the Q&A. He, he does? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, you you were prepared for that? Yes. Okay. Mr. Bryson, you should have the ability to speak. Commissioners, good afternoon. Uh, I won't be long. long. I want to thank you all for this meeting today. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that we are clear about the issue of the City Department of Transportation, uh, that it has all powers necessary to carry out all functions related to transportation. And to that end, I want to make sure that there are provisions in the charter change that allow the Department of Transportation to write, send out, receive, review, and make final determinations on all requests for scope of work and funding for all transportation related projects. This would include, but not be lim but may not be limited to all street and sidewalk maintenance, repair and resurfacing, all bridge, pier and harbor work, all lighting replace placement and replacement, all instances of work on streets and sidewalks, permits for the city activities as well as businesses and all other instances that are directly or indirectly related to all modes of transportation. This would also include any multimodal efforts, including studies and discussions with possible vendors. The goal is to have the City Department of Transportation be the one-stop shop for all things transportation related in the City of St. Louis. And I thank you for your time and will answer any questions that you might have. Uh, Mr. Bryson, um, it's um, uh, Commissioner Crossland. Just a question: How how would this relate or not to the quote unquote transportation responsibilities slash garages, street beaters, and et cetera that are within the treasurer's office? Uh, Commissioner Crossland, it 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 would not unless there were a change uh, done by the board of aldermen. Uh, or you could add that into this conversation uh, and mandate that the charter be changed to reflect the fact that the, uh, the city department of transportation would then oversee uh, garages, and, which it does to some degree now, but also parking privileges as well. Thank you. Commissioner Crosland, could you repeat your question? Sure. I'm sorry. I'm... I was I was asking for clarity because he said all things related to transportation. And uh, so the garages and parking, uh, city-owned garages and parking, I would think, might fit within all things related to transportation. And so, and so I, I wanted to understand whether they right, had right. considered Okay, I got it. Not. If you would like... Uh, separate legal advice regarding state law and the treasurer's authority over parking, yeah. then I can do that outside of this public forum. Yeah, it's not, a, I just wanted to raise the issue because I think that as you guys, as 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 the actual language is being uh, 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 being developed, it's, it's a consideration that we wanna make sure we include. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Grant. And Mr. Bryson, I just wanna be sure because there might be discussions with the city council's office in the next day or two about whatever revisions there have been 
need to be made to any draft that's been circulated is um when you say all things transportation related yeah so which are you including for instance the process by which uh contracts are let for trans transportation projects so like currently the city charter creates a process under the um, public works provision article about how an ordinance has to be for any public works has to be approved or recommended by the board of public service and then the contract is let out by the board of public service are you saying that you want that process to be run by the department of transportation independent of the board of public service yes if it directly relates to uh any particular issue related to transportation uh it should be handled by the department of transportation and the reason why is what you really want is you want a uh overarching system of transportation related um issues and so when you look at whether it's uh uh, repairing a street or sidewalk, whether it's putting in a bicycle um, uh, track, whether it's uh, doing something around lighting, uh, that should be the mo. That should be the trans to have the transportation authority do all of those issues, so that a it keeps track of those issues. B uh, it has a good idea of when those things need to be fixed because it has that track record and see any changes by the, any city government, uh, whether it's the mayor, whether it's the Board of Aldermen, goes through the streets, I'm sorry, the Transportation Department, so it can be assessed along with all other entities that the Transportation Department is doing at the time. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I understood the scope of what you were saying, so thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other uh, questions for Mr. Bryson? Thank you, Mr. Bryson, for your public comment. Uh, uh, now it looks like uh, Amber Cole uh, has a comment. I'd like to recognize her. Good evening. Good evening. Um, uh, several things. I'm thinking when Mr. Bryson was talking about the transportation, I agree with the transportation. Uh, if are you talking about breaking down the department of streets and putting it under transportation or are you just making a transportation department that's a question uh i do not support uh breaking uh ena reform at in this present moment uh present way i do agree with that this can uh that the charter do needs to be reformed because of things that are going on. I, be, uh, I support uh, giving more authority to the Board of Aldermen uh, for as uh, them adding and subtracting. Uh, the pronoun, eh, is, I, you can do something with that. I agree with that. Um, I'm thinking, is that the only ones y'all had? <laughs> I'm trying to look through my paperwork. I believe those are more the uh, voting. I'm not really in support of it because I don't really understand it. I don't, un and what I don't understand, I will no longer do that because I did that when we was voting the board of aldermen down to twenty from twenty eight ward twenty eight yeah twenty eight wards down to. 14, we really didn't, uh, I believe it wasn't really thought about and wasn't not, we wasn't educated. We thought we was going to get more representation uh, and getting more funds and thought we was going to, one one ward was going to be able to uh, be a part of that whole pot. But now I'm finding out Ward 11 that extends from Shoto all the way up here to the North Corridor, we don't receive, we're not gonna receive any funding from down on Slough or 
or the Grand Center, none of that. So that's their little pot down there. So that's not fair to me if you're going to put the ward, put the ward together. So um, until we get a good, I get a good understanding on the voting and how that interacts, I will not be in favor of that. I believe that's it. Thank you so much for your comment and for participating tonight. I'd now like to recognize uh, Alderman Michael Browning. We are, oh, she's gone, okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see a hand raised. Uh, sorry, Commissioner Riley. Did you have a comment? No, I just, I just thought we had an opportunity there to help educate Ms. Cole about why we thought the voting was important, uh, but she's already she's already moved off, so. Well, okay. I believe she's still listening though. So uh, uh, Mr. Browning, if you could hold for just a moment, uh, and I'd love to open it up for commissioners to respond to Ms. Cole. Scott, would you mind sharing our thoughts around voting? Yeah, our, our thoughts on voting is that by moving uh, the election cycle from March and April for a primary and a general to a federal election cycle, an even year federal election cycle that would take place either during a presidential year or what's referred to as an off year when there's still congressional and senatorial races, United States Senate races, the turnout in those elections tend to be higher. And so if you move the elections then, more people will go and vote. The And by doing that, you remove a substantial cost from the extra elections, the March and April you don't elections we currently, we currently hold. So and that was the idea, is that more people would vote demonstrably. The, and... Um, and that there would be a modest savings, maybe a decent savings, but there certainly would be more people who would vote. Thank you, Commissioner Antagliata. Uh, Alderman Browning, I recognize you. Uh, yes, can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. Well, thank you. Um, I want to first thank you all for your work over the last year. Uh, I know that you haven't been tasked with an uh, easy mission, but you've approached it as thoughtfully as possible. And uh, also just appreciate the chance to speak today. Um, I want to uplift the, the Department of Transportation. Uh, I, I heard a comment that only Trailnet cared about it, and I, I want to push back on that. Um, there was strong community turnout, uh, especially when you had your event at the History Museum. Uh, there are several people that showed up to talk about that. I also have been talking about it out in the community where I've been, and I, I hear nothing but positive feedback. Uh, I can't emphasize enough how inequitable our current system of taking care of our streets are. Um, we, we see that result in the injury and death out on our streets. It is not normal. Other cities have fixed this. Uh, we, we should not continue to look at this as something that is just something we can just keep doing the status quo and it's okay. Um, I think uh, I agree with uh, Mr. Bryson about the capabilities of the Department of Transportation. And I also want to highlight that I think that the director of the Department of Transportation should be able to create divisions within the department as necessary. And divisions should also be able to be created by the Board of Aldermen uh, through ordinance. Um, I would caution against the idea of the Board of Aldermen being able to wholesale create departments by ordinance. Uh, I think that should be a difficult thing to do it, just because of the cost involved with each department. Uh, but divisions to me makes more sense because that's more of an organization thing. Um, the last thing I'll say is that the elections, I I don't disagree that more turnout is, is a good thing, but uh, I have serious concerns over pushing it to the even years. Uh, you'll be mixing approval voting with the normal type of voting, and that will be lead to a very confusing ballot. It'll lead to a very long ballot. It'll make elections rather unaffordable. It will advantage incumbents. 
Uh, ballot drop off is a very real thing. You can look up the science on that. People will just not vote for the local elections. It could decrease turnout for those. And it would leave the school board all alone, an election that already does not get enough attention. So it would not even save costs because you'd be still running that election in the spring. Uh, I think it would make more sense to move it to the odd years in order to keep it consistent. That still leaves the school board issue, but I think that we can work with the state to change that. Um, and uh, again, I, I just want to say thank you for all your work. I know that it's tough when you go into the community and hear from people uh, about some of the things that you've spent a lot of time and thought and on, but I also want to emphasize not to throw out an entire year's work uh, and, and previous two public engagement meetings that you've held are a lot of good ideas here. And I didn't, I was there last night. I don't think there was a lot of discussion about the ideas. There was a lot of discussion about one office, but there was not a lot of discussion about the ideas. And, and I think that you, you came up with some good thoughts and, and it deserves consideration. So I would encourage you to advance as many of these as you can. Thank you so much, before, Michael. Michael, yes. before you get off, uh, just a couple of ideas. Uh, the Board of Elections told us that there would be a savings, so we can, you know, have them back and talk about it. Uh, the other thing is that studies that that we were privy to and have seen showed that there's less than four percent fall off on a federal election between local issues and national issues which would still mean you'd have almost triple the people voting in the average municipal election. I will Thank you. To, um, yes, please go ahead, uh, Commissioner Nolan Nichols. In the, I have, I'm looking at my documents, so I have eight community organization meetings that I attended that spoke specifically to the Department of Transportation need, want and desire. So there has been a variety of input. I do not believe what City Councilor Hamilton said was that TrailNet was the only Department of Transportation recommendation we got. We got several recommendations for considering the Department of, of Transportation from public meetings, public hearings, and organizations that I have been to and I believe other commissioners have been to as well before and after me. And there are also older persons that are in support of a Department of Transportation related to the historical climate for the city's department needs, transportation needs. So there are caucuses, there are associations, organizations, institutions that want and need and have a desire for Department of Transportation. So I want to make sure that that is clear to the total commission. Thank you, Commissioner Nol uh, Nolan Nichols. It looks like uh, the next uh, public comment would come from uh, Reverend, uh, Reverend Darrell Gray. Thank you very much, commissioners. I know that all of you must be tired. I want to thank you very much for coming out to the community last night. Um, it showed uh, your level of commitment to the entire community. Um, and as we said, and I, I want to disagree with my own alderman, Mr. Browning, there was more than one issue that was uh, communicated last night. Uh, so to say that uh, one issue was a predominant issue, that might be correct, but there were many issues that were discussed as it related to the seven recommendations proposed by the commission. So I don't want anybody uh, looking at this record years from now and saying that you went up to the black community and we only discussed or presented on one issue because that's not correct. I myself must have presented on at least four. Uh, I wanted to come on and say thank you again. Uh, I know this uh, has been arduous. I know it is tiresome. You've put in a lot of work and you've put in a lot of effort. And I know that the last thing you want to do is think that you have not accomplished anything, but you've accomplished a lot. You've begun a discussion. You've been involved in a discussion. You've, you've heard other people. And so 
I think that that in and of itself is success. I support reform. The clergy coalition supports charter reform. The Baptist Ministers Union, of which I represent, these organizations support what the, the spirit of the ordinance and the creation of the Charter Commission uh, implied. We, we, we disagreed uh, with methodology. We disagreed with some things. We vehemently disagree with changing Board of ENA. We strongly disagree uh, with the public advocacy. Uh, I want to thank Commissioner Grant for at least including uh, oversight in that as a discussion item. I wish it uh, had gotten a little bit more prominence, but at least it was listed as a discussion item. So thank you, Commissioner Grant, for that you heard us. Uh, and that's important. Um, you know, as far as elections, again, I think people are concerned about the even, even years. Uh, we're concerned about what that, how that would impact the school board. So please look at that. And then finally, and I know you're saying, wait a minute, finally, Reverend Grace going to talk all night? No, I'm not. Finally, uh, I think it is important. Uh, we don't want the strong mayor uh, who's able to make appointments and terminate people at will. We, we want there to be a process. Uh, and if the civil service uh, is the extension of that process now, then that process exists. If the civil service is going to be eliminated, and certain appointed people are not going to be covered under civil service, then there should be due process. There should be a fair process. And we think that the board of all the people uh, might be that, that second somber group of eyes that would uh, take the place of a civil service commission. Uh, and this has nothing to do with the current mayor. We don't know who we're going to get next time around. Uh, if it's going to be the same mayor or a different mayor, this is to protect the integrity of, of public service, is to ensure that we don't go back to patronage and political influence. And I think that we've made that clear. And, you know, I do want to say, uh, I, I hope that one of the new recommendations might be that this commission would uh, ask the, 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 the citizenry, the residents, to give it another year to be able to more thoroughly vet some of these ideas and recommendations, to more thoroughly uh, engage and be involved in uh, community consultation. Uh, I, would, I would definitely support it and would recommend it to the organizations I work with to allow this commission another year. That way you're not feeling that I'm, I'm at the end of the road here, this is it. And if I don't get something in now, I've wasted my time. I think you've done a good enough job uh, to, to have that time extended so that you're able to do those things that we've asked you to do. And again, I thank you all. I apologize last night uh, for my tone. Uh, I think that I my tone might have been a little off-putting, uh, but I'm not going to apologize for my content. Uh, I meant what I said, uh, but I do apologize uh, if the way I said it uh, offended anyone. And so thank you very much for your work. Thank you, Reverend Gray. Uh, any comments or questions for Reverend Gray? All right, thank you. I noticed that Amber Cole and Ms. Cole has her hand raised again. Uh, Ms. Cole, did you have another question for the commission or another comment? Yes, I, I, I too agree with Reverend Gray and, and like to thank you each and every one that participated and I want to encourage you that if everybody's saying the same thing somebody's not needed on here and so everyone should uh, be able to voice their opinions voice where they because it's, it appears that everyone's coming from different perspectives and that's good that's what we are we're human beings you know so we're all not going to think we got different things but we should honor and hear what the others are saying. So I do want to say thank you uh, for what the time that you put in, uh, encourage you to continue on, listen to one another, please listen to one another because each one is valuable. Each voice is valuable because if I don't hear your voice, I would never know something needs to be addressed. 
So, um, but yes, I, I thank you for all that you have done. And I didn't want to let you go away thinking that we're just pouncing on you, but we've been hurt for so long. And I just wanted to tell you, thank you for your service, each and every one of you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Ms. Cole. Uh, uh, Commissioner Grant, to see your hand raised. Yeah, and I don't, I don't know if there are other members of the public waiting to talk. I can't tell. Uh, uh, actually, there is uh, Alderman Aldrich. Just raised, I saw his hand raised. Okay, I, I, I just wanted to. I do have one other thing I want to ask Miss Hamilton before we okay. conclude for the, uh, for the evening. But uh, I'll, that's, our, that's our, next, our next agenda item is related to the city council's office, so maybe. Okay, so if you want me to? I can. Uh, the, the question, should, should we why, why don't we finish public comment yeah, and then we'll, we will move okay. to the next agenda item uh, where you might be able to raise that i'd like to recognize uh, alderman aldrich uh thank you uh vice chair uh sheridan of the mighty 14th award uh, i also just want to echo uh some comments that uh came from committee woman Cole, uh amber Cole. first i also want to thank each commission member uh for putting in a lot of time a lot of hard work um, you know, you guys were asked to do something as a heavy lift. First time in the city of St. Louis, all volunteers have uh, a lot going on outside of uh, this. Also want to thank all the members who are not um, staff members, uh, Millbrook from the mayor's office, uh, Ms. Hamilton from the city council's office, and Gracia from the president's office, as well as our personnel director, uh, Ms. Sonia Gray, because I know outside of the official capacities uh, of your offices, you are also very busy. So I want to just thank the whole commission for uh, a lot that you guys have done. And I, I want to echo some comments that uh, Director Sonia Gray said of don't feel that you guys are a failure because um, there has not been conversations around looking at our charter in a very long time. I'm only 30, so I don't know how long, but I would say at least probably in my 25 years or 20 years, I really started paying attention where people were talking about the charter. So. Uh, just starting conversations is, uh, I think, really key and important. And I think is actually in the last few months at the Board of Aldermen, uh, we've been having conversations on some of the recommendations that was proposed, some that was not proposed. And, you know, how do we make sure that after this commission that some of those changes continue to move forward? I will not uh, make any suggestions on what should move forward. I will say I think that you guys have a handful of recommendations that uh, in a short time, you know, I think someone said, if we move these to the ballot, I think it was uh, the doctor, I'm so sorry, uh, no, knows, I'm probably butchering her name, sorry, doctor, but, you know, how do we make sure if we move it to the ballot that it actually gets done? And I think some of the ones that are being proposed are not just easy, but something I think communities can be sold on. And I think others that may be a little heavy lift, if not moved uh, to the ballot by November, knowing that it's going to be a very heavy ballot. It's going to be a lot of stuff on there from abortion to sports betting to the Board of Aldermen is passing. Um, other ballot measures that may be on the ballot don't want those to get uh, kind of bundled down at the bottom where they're not heard about or people don't vote on them. But I will say uh, there were several that you guys voted on today that I think uh, has appetite the budget one I'm already working on and I uh, that was not an idea I know uh, Commissioner Grant said if the board's already doing it why are we here that truly was due to the work of uh, this commission of seeing that recommendation and moving on it early so that uh, it has enough time for people also to continue to have conversations on it at the board of aldermen but um, I just want to thank this commission uh, you guys have done an excellent job I've been impressed uh, and I enjoy watching and I'm just uh, honored that we have so many uh, great people that was willing to step up throughout the city of St. Louis to take on such a huge task. So thank you all. Thank you, Alderman Aldrich. Uh, any questions or comments for the Alderman? Okay, it looks like uh, we don't have any further public comments. Uh, thank you to all of those that are that have participated, either asking your questions or submitting questions via the q and A. I'm going to check the q and A box one more time to make sure that everything's been addressed. Uh, Mr. Bryson's comment uh, and question was addressed in his uh, discussion. Um, a couple others were just comments. And then uh, Mr. Connolly asked us to clarify if the vote for the uh, for the motion on uh, clarify the outcome of the vote 
not to move forward with the heavy ENA reform. Uh, I'm trying to understate. That is correct. We are not moving forward with the heavy ENA reform. Correct, uh, commissioners? Okay. Right. Correct. But I think to Commissioner Carlson's point earlier, we're not moving it down. Excuse me. We're not moving it down to the other subset. It's all completely. So that right. may be the question they're asking about. Okay. Then all questions have been answered. Uh, I want to move on to the next item of the agenda, uh, which is discussion regarding scheduling or canceling any necessary drafting meetings with the city councilor's office. Uh, it's my understanding that the following commissioners have scheduled drafting meetings with the city councilor's office, uh, Commissioner Crossland, uh, Crossland, Commissioner Dwight, Commissioner Grant, Commissioner Nolan Eccles, and uh, myself. Uh, it's also come to my attention that City Hall is now closed on Friday the 5th, deservedly so. Let me just say that for the record, deservedly so. Uh, in light of the discussion in the last agenda item, are there any commissioners who wish to cancel their meetings or commissioners who need to schedule their meetings with the city councilor's office? Would it make sense to consolidate our meetings to the extent possible tomorrow? No. <laughs> I, I mean, I think that that could be a challenge uh, because I no. think at this point it would, it would, okay. No. Thank you. <laughs> I, think, I, I, also, I also think it'd be a challenge because of trying to coordinate. Uh, we all have different boxes that we've tried to grab a time with, uh, that of, with the, with the counselor. Uh, Commissioner Dwight. Um, I think based on our decisions today, I don't need my meeting. My, I would have a question about the Department of Transportation just based off of some of the comment and discussion we've had today, just to make sure like we're deciding if we're including those things in the, in what's being drafted, but otherwise I don't, I don't, you can cancel my meeting. And so we've got Grant, Croslin, Sheridan, and Nolan Eccles. Correct. Well, and I would assume that my meeting will be relatively short because we're really only going to talk about the language and any yeah. modifications there. I think that's right. Mm -hmm. So my question for Ms. Hamilton and and this might be something that we need to do a more full discussion, but be prepared to talk about when we vote on Monday. Is I guess one, there's a logistical question of if we vote to move forward, let's say with two of these items or three of these items, they have the six votes. Do we legit like they are right now drafted as separate ordinances? So do we seek to combine them into one? And logistically, what does that require? And two, does that pose a single subject issue? Yeah, we have reserved space for a closed session if you would like to get legal advice. I think, and I, I think, I mean, I would. I think there needs to be some legal advice and I and so maybe there needs to be some thought put into that, which uh I mean I I I I haven't researched the issue. I mean I can think of an argument for as a commission as a body votes to move forward reported ostensibly unrelated items related to like the Department of Transportation and elections or something like that, but yet they are the product of the commission's work you know they still constitute one subject but I, I don't know i think we just need to think about that right i moved yeah. to the closed session to receive legal counsel yeah but i don't think we're prepared to do that it's possible a motion is on the table uh by commissioner okay. o'reilly it's been moved and seconded uh all those in favor oh, we're gonna do a roll call vote i'm sorry uh uh, Commissioner Grant? Aye. Commissioner Crossland? Aye. Commissioner Dwight? Aye. Commissioner Intagliata? Aye. Commissioner Riley? Aye. Commissioner Nolan Eccles? Aye. 
And I also vote aye. Uh, we will move into uh, closed, section, uh, closed session pursuant to Missouri Revised Statute Section 610.021, comma, or parent one. Um, and so we'll go into closed session now. And um, here's what we're going to do. Um, we are we have members of the public who are here and we don't have STLTV. So we're going to have to be a little crafty. So you all are going to exit this meeting. You're going to receive an email link to click on to that meeting. And then we are going to come back to this meeting. OK, and we okay. have to come back to this meeting and adjourn. We have to come back. Correct. Yes. OK. Correct. All right. So members, members of the public will be right back. Yeah, we'll be right back. Did you unmute?
Okay, I think we're all, people are coming back in from closed session. Give it a moment. I, I have to apologize, everybody. I have to leave the meeting. So thank you, though, for your, your time. See thank you, Chris. You. I think we still have six commissioners, so we still have a quorum. Correct? Yes. Uh, the next item for business on the agenda is adjournment. Uh, we've arrived at our final item. I'll now uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, I will do a roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Dwight? Aye. Commissioner Intagliata? Aye. Commissioner Riley? Aye. Commissioner Nolan Eccles? Aye. Commissioner Crossland? Commissioner Crossland? You, you, you've got the vote. Okay. Uh, any nays? Any abstentions? All right. Hearing none, It's uh, we are adjourned. Thank you so much. We'll see everybody. Uh, have a wonderful four.